Um, I, have a, I have a really uh, interesting word for you today. I think it's very simple, to the point, uh, but also very practical, practical and uh, relatable. Um, if you're here today and you feel a certain weight on your shoulder, I think there's a lot of things happening in the world right now where we just need like a message of encouragement. Um, if you have something that you're carrying with you today, I just want you to know that God has something amazing for you that like it'll give you a good reason to relax and just rest in his presence. So I hope you're looking forward to that. I'm excited to share this with you. Let's go ahead and uh, start off with the scripture, okay? If you want to open your Bibles with me to the book of Mark. The book of Mark. Chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. And as you're looking, uh, I'll reiterate that uh, everything is going to be all right. Despite what the world seems like right now, I mean, it just feels like we're completely upside down again, I think. Um, but everything's going to be all right. And that's something that I want to, uh, to take home today. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41, and it says this. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall or squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in, stern, in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care? If we drown, he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet! Be still! Then the wind died, died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Look to your neighbor and tell them, It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Go ahead and close your eyes and bow your heads right where you are. Father, in this moment, uh, first of all, I just, I thank you so much for this privilege of being able to be in your house. There's people in the world right now that can't exactly say that. They can't exactly practice this thing that we call the Christian faith and lifestyle. So first of all, I just thank you so much for this privilege of just allowing us to be in this country and, and uh, practice our religious faith. In this moment, I ask that you repair each and every single heart that is represented here, every soul that is represented in this building and, and watching online or on a recorded broadcast stream on YouTube, wherever this ends up. I ask that you prepare our hearts to receive what you have for us today. I ask that you comfort us and encourage us as you remind us that everything will be all right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So... Going into depth on current events and the news that is going on in the world doesn't seem to be the right approach this afternoon, but let me just briefly remind you a couple things that are going on. So teachers are fearful to go back to school as, as it is in person again. Christians and innocent people are being persecuted in Afghanistan, and COVID-19 is as real as it was over a year ago. Are we on the same page? That's going on right now, and it's so real in the world. And you see, I almost feel like the disciples in the boat because these dudes were just trying to get to the other side. And here comes a storm that could drown them. And I ask you today, what is your other side that you find yourself today trying to get to? What is the other side of the sea that you can definitely say, you know what, I'm trying to get there? I feel like the disciples right now. What has been or is your circumstance that has you asking, Lord, do you not care if I drown? And can we just be real today? Like, there is no one, I, I can't believe that there is anyone in this room that has never sat back and questioned God in a sense of like, God, do you really care about me given my circumstances? 
Don't come telling me that you've never questioned God's methods of demonstrating his glory. Can someone agree with me that it felt like Jesus was sometimes asleep in the storm? He was asleep in the storm. And you know what? I think I'm speaking to those that have felt distant from his word. I feel like to people that have been distant from his voice, his presence, and you don't feel him anymore. And you think that you can't hear him or you wonder if he forgot about you. Sometimes things seem to be up and running again. And then we're reminded that in this world we will have trouble just as John 16, says. Yet, despite that guarantee, despite that guarantee that we will have trouble in this world, Jesus encourages you to take heart because he asserts and declares that he has already overcome the world. Jesus has already overcome every single circumstance and obstacle that we will ever face. And the word says that he will take us from glory to glory. But on your way towards a new glory, you may encounter struggles, setback, and inconveniences, and you could still be in the will of God like the disciples that obey Jesus, Jesus' command, and you can still encounter some rain along the way. But today I feel like God wants to remind you that he has everything completely figured out. He... He has everything completely figured out, and the Lord is just trying to say today, take a breath. Slow down. Be still. And know that I am God. Creator of the entire universe, as it lies in the palm of my hands, I am in control. It'll be all right. So I encourage you to practice your faith in God and... I encourage you to rest in his presence today. And I've titled today's message, It'll Be All Right. The first thing that I want to talk about to you today is the promise that Jesus gives us as believers. Because here's the truth. He give, God is a God of promises. And I can guarantee you that when God says something, it will happen. Everything in this word, if he said it, it is true, it is guaranteed, it will come to pass. That is the word of God. It is true and it is life. It is in the inspired word of God. It is him speaking to us. It is his promises coming at us, and we can have faith that it will come to pass. There's that guarantee. But first, before I talk about Jesus' command with the promise, let's first break down the types of storms that we're seeing in Mark chapter 4, all right? Because obviously there's this circumstantial storm. We'll talk about that. But what about the other storms that these disciples were facing? Because you know what? There's three. There's three storms that we see in Mark chapter 4. And you know what? I, I need to encourage you today for the storms in your life, okay? Whatever you're dealing with, I encourage you to see it past the surface level. The surface level is seeing the storm for what it is and that is it and not, dig and not digging deeper into what, what it was meant for. When you... See a storm at the surface level, you sacrifice or, or you take the chance of losing your faith. When you view storms at the surface level, you subscribe to an account of ignorance. My people perish for a lack of knowledge, Hosea 4.9. And you see, people don't lose faith just because. People don't just lose faith because, oh, it just happened. There's a certain system, there's a certain pattern that we find in storms, like the ones that we see in, in, in this story about um, Jesus and in the storm and this boat. There's a certain pattern that every single storm that we have follows. People don't just lose their faith. You're not doubting your faith in God by accident. And in my studies and preparation for this message, I've learned that storms function in three stages and I believe that gaining knowledge on these three stages will help increase your faith. Let's talk about the storms that the disciples were going through for a moment. The circumstantial storm. The circumstantial storm. The circumstantial storm. The wind is blowing, the waves are crashing, the thunder is roaring, and the boat is flooding. The circumstantial storm is totally and absolutely out of anyone's control. And this can be just like the circumstantial storms in your life that are completely unique and new to you. 
Is there something in your life, whether it be a circumstance that relates to divorce, a disease, or a financial crisis, circumstantial storms are out of our control, and it's these exact circumstances that cause you and I to feel hopeless and helpless. The disciples face a circumstantial storm, and they also face an emotional storm. And I love the way that Tony Evans put this. It's hilarious. He says, the disciples weren't scared of the storm. These guys were scared. These guys were scared. They were absolutely terrified. If you're like me, I, or my wife, for example, sometimes we tend to be control freaks. If something is not in our control, if we lose a cell phone or something happens in, in a meeting or whatever you want to call it, or we're late to some place, sometimes we exert so much energy as if our sense of panic could somehow cause the situation to fix. And it, it, that's just not how it is. The more you freak out about something, you're just exerting energy that takes a toll on you. Let me just be the one to say that, like, no matter what amount of energy you put towards a circumstance, it won't change it. Only God can do that. He says that the disciples were scared. And you know what? These guys are professional fishermen. These are people that go onto a boat and they expect things like this to happen. But the fact that the storm is so extreme, it's so intense, it's such a circumstance that is out of their control, it causes these people to experience emotional imbalance. They are experiencing an emotional storm. They have no idea how to go about this issue. The circumstantial storm provoked an emotional insecurity. And I just want to ask you today, what circumstantial storm in your life has caused you to be emotionally insecure? What major uncontrollable circumstance in your life has caused you to have an emotional storm? And you see, I can't, I can't tell you, I can't count, I can't give you with the fingers of my hand, I can't tell you how many people I've met in my life that through the circumstantial storms in their life, which lead to an emotional storm, I can't tell you how many people I've met in my life that once they go through these storms, they experience a theological storm. You start to question God. You start to question whether or not what you are believing is even true. How could a God that is so big and so great so much, and full of so much love allow me to go through these things? A theological storm. A storm in your soul. Because the truth is, this world is going through so much, and you might find yourself right now emotionally insecure because nothing is in your control. And within your lack of control, you start to question God. Jesus, do you really care if I drown right now? Jesus, do you, you, you brought up, like you allowed a pandemic to come upon our, our earth and so many of us were unemployed and so many of us are still, like we still feel that toll right now of that loss of a job or opportunity and you're in a theological storm. Verse 38, the disciples woke Jesus and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if I drown? And it all started with a circumstance. And the reason why theological storms happen is because what you hear on Sunday is not sometimes what you experience on Monday, the next day. That's just how the enemy works. And, you, and you're, you're like, no, this doesn't click. So it must be false, right? Jesus must not truly care. He must want me to drown. And that's how the disciples find themselves right now. They find themselves in this theological storm. And if you haven't encountered a storm that was completely outside of your control, shook your emotions, and threatened your theology, trust me, you will. Just keep living. But look at Jesus in verse 35. And this is something that I want you to take away. And... This is probably the main focus of this point. We're talking about the promise. Jesus made a promise to his disciples. And I think in this verse right here, 
we distinguish the difference between a boss and a leader. In verse 35, we see Jesus saying, let's go to the other side, not you go. That is the difference between the ultimate leader, the best leader in the entire universe, are Jesus Christ. He's set by example. He said, I'm not just going to send you along this path that I already know you're going to experience trouble in. I've already guaranteed that promise. That is a fact that is given. I'm going to send you over to the other side. I'm going to set you to this boat. Let this boat represent your Christian lifestyle for a moment. Let this boat represent your life and your walk with Christ and everything that you do on a daily basis. And as you experience storms, right? Jesus guarantees a storm to happen, but he says, let us go to the other side. The promise that Jesus has for you today and a good reason for you to today relax and rest in his presence is because of the promise that Jesus will be with you in the boat. He promised that. And his promises prevail. And that's exactly what he did. You think that Jesus, uh, our Lord and Savior, creator, had no clue that a storm was coming? He created the weather. This isn't no Houston weatherman with an inaccurate weather analysis or whatever. No, Jesus knew this was coming. And in his love and his mercy and his grace, he says, let us go to the other side. And that's the promise that I need you to take with you today. That's the promise that God wants you to keep today. With that being said, stop living in light of your problems and start living in light of God's promise. Because at the surface level, our circumstances can seem very scary that we start to enter emotional insecurity. And within that emotional insecurity, you start to enter, to enter theological conflict with yourself. You, you just start, you, you can't believe this anymore. So I need you to have faith that God, the creator of all things, he said, hey, I'm going to be with you. Take that with you today and rest in that truth. The second thing that I want to talk to you about today is when Jesus sleeps. So you've gained an understanding of how storms work, of how they function. You know the levels, you know the stages, but what will you do with this newfound faith strengthening knowledge? What will you do with this? That is what will make a difference. Because I think there's going to be more times in your life I don't think, I guarantee that there will be more times in your life where you will feel like Jesus was asleep in the storm. It might, it's not anything new. I mean, I, I've encountered that. I felt like Jesus was asleep. And I can tell you that when I first experienced that, it happened again. It happened again. You know what? One thing that completely fascinates me about Jesus being asleep in this boat is the fact that, yeah, he was 100% God, but he was 100% man. That's who Jesus is. This fact is so fascinating because in his human nature, Jesus Christ was able to sleep in the midst of a storm, yet Jesus remained calm. And here's something that human Jesus knew that the disciples did not know. Here's something that human Jesus knew that the disciples would not know. They did not know. And it's that the circumstantial storm in these disciples' life was nothing that Jesus could not handle. Jesus slept because control over the storm was already granted. Jesus was not worried because victory is already ours. I've said this before, but anyone that reads this book from the beginning to the end will tell you, you and I win. We're winners. We're more than conquerors. Jesus slept because control over the storm was already granted. Jesus was not worried because victory was already given, and it was just a matter of time. And I think God wants me to remind you today that Jesus already has a victory, and you need to start having faith 
in that fact that he is the answer. But what will you do while you wait? Because it is a matter of time. Jesus is the answer. But what will you do while you wait? I think it's easier to answer, what's the least you can do? The least you can do in a storm, when it feels like Jesus is sleeping, when it feels like you've lost your connection to the Holy Spirit, when it feels like you can't feel his presence anymore, you're in this boat, waves are crashing, you feel like you're drowning, you're questioning God. What is the least that you can do in the midst of this? The very least. Being faithful, right? And waiting. But I, I want to encourage you today, and I think this is only for the bold, and I encourage you to be bold, and while you wait, can you just praise him? Can you just praise him? Can you live your Christian lifestyle like you know that you've already won? Like you know that the solution to this problem is Jesus Christ? In your, in your storm, in your circumstances, whatever life brings you, whatever rocks your boat, can you praise God even though it seems that Jesus is sleeping? Because I guarantee you that the time will come when Jesus is coming through roaring with authority. But what, what, how awesome would it be to be able to say that Jesus, while I waited on you, I praised you. That is what I did. I praised you. Whenever I felt like you were asleep, whenever I felt you were absent, I knew in my heart and my soul, in my mind, that you were in the background. Amen. Amen. The least you can do is wait. That's the very least. But praise the Lord with all your heart. Because the victory is already yours. When it feels like Jesus is sleeping, praise him. He'll come soon. He's never late. He's never early. He's right on time. Your glory to glory will come. That is his promise. Because when he commanded you to get on the boat and onto the other side, he said he was coming with you. And that's why that is true. And if you have a testimony to share, I encourage you to share it. I think we all might have something to share. I think God has brought us through things, and we haven't exactly shared those things at our, at our church. But let me just say that testimonies are a chance for everyone to, to grow in their faith. Um, can I just say, I went through something really tough last month, and the, like, medically speaking, I shouldn't be here right now. It's only by the grace and mercy of God that I'm able to even speak and articulate phrases and, and sentences. Medically speaking, I should be brain dead. And I'll stick to script a little bit because there's a couple of details that I don't want to miss out. But last month, medically speaking, should have been my last above ground. I was battling a tough sickness that for quite a while was mysterious. I couldn't eat. I could barely drink anything. I was stuck in bed, trembling, absolutely out of control. My body ached like never before. I thought sticking to the script would help. This is hard. I'm sorry. I, I hate whenever preachers do this. I hate it. Like, I absolutely hate it. So I, I, I get how you feel right now. Trust me. Um... <laughs> um my body ached like never before. It was nearly impossible to sleep at night. 
I visited a local clinic, and the doctor could only guess that it, might, it must have been something to do with my stomach. He prescribed me with medication, but nothing worked for me. I continued feeling sick, battling intense fevers, shaking out of control so badly that when I shook, I could no longer speak. I began struggling to follow conversations or things that were being sent to me. I started to imagine things and hear things from people that they never said. And one morning, as I laid in my bed, my father checked my temperature. It had reached 106. By the time I made it to the doctor, my temperature had gone up to 108. One doctor told me that given the severity of my fevers, I should have already been dead. The fact that I was still standing was medically impossible. I spent several hours at another hospital in which they ran some tests. I left with a diagnosis of pneumonia. If you knew how I felt, if you knew how difficult those two weeks were for me, you would know that for me, I felt that as if one of the only things that I had left was my ability to breathe. A few days before my pneumonia diagnosis, I told my wife that if I lost my ability to breathe, I couldn't guarantee that I'd be able to fight the sickness any longer. I was too tired, too weak, and in too much pain to deal with breathing difficulties. In the hospital room, I almost lost hope, but even with my pneumonia diagnosis, I was able to take a big, deep breath. A big, deep, consistent, and clean, fresh breath of air. And what I confused for a mistake, no one believed. It, it, it was, I was breathing so, effortless, so effortlessly, so calmly, so excellently that it, was, that it was impossible to accept my diagnosis. And what I confused for human error, I learned was a, a miracle from God. Because the truth is, medicine is at its highest peak right now. Like, error is pretty marginal, especially after these intense um, tests that I went through. Given my pneumonia diagnosis, I was still able to breathe. And given the COVID guidelines, I couldn't stay there overnight, even though I truly felt like I needed to. I was sent home with some prescriptions for inhalers and other forms of breathing support medication. But despite my diagnosis for pneumonia, God allowed me to breathe so freely, so effortlessly, that I never needed to pick up the medication. I still have the prescription form. Should have brought it with me today. I didn't need it. And Lord knows that if, like that was it for me. My breath, it, it felt like that's all I had. I survived a 108 fever, which medically speaking should either kill me or leave me brain dead. And I breathed effortlessly despite being diagnosed with pneumonia. I did not, not, I did not die, and God healed my lungs. Later at another emergency room on another day, I had more tests done on me. They finally, they finally diagnosed me with a stomach flu. I was told that with proper hydration, antibiotic, and ibuprofen, I would feel better within three days. And that's what happened. I don't know why things happened the way they did, but I know why that happened. And it's because God wanted to show me his glory. Amen. And I share this with all, of, with all of you today because God still works miracles. God is the same yesterday as he is today. There is no doubt in my mind, in my heart and my soul, that Jesus heals. Amen. Whether that be a sickness, a disease, a marriage, a financial situation, a friendship, you describe it. When Jesus speaks, like he spoke over that sea, everything bows down in his name. And I can testify and declare that today. Amen. Finally, when Jesus woke up, verse 39 says this, he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. 
Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And with that same authority that was spoken over that sea, when Jesus commanded, quiet, be still. I declare that every circumstantial storm in your life right now bows down in the name of Jesus. Any emotional insecurity that you are holding in your heart right now bows down in the name of Jesus. Every theological storm in your life that you have right now bows down, leaves you alone in Jesus' name. You are a son and daughter of God. He is still alive today. He reigns. And he said, when he sent you on this journey to live a Christian lifestyle, that you will not go alone, that I will be with you. Just the way that I told my disciples, go. Go over to the other side. Correction. He said, let us go. Just like he said, let us go to the other side. He says to you, the storm that you're in, let's progress. Let's move on to your next glory, glory. Because I guarantee you that I am with you. I have not forgotten you. I have not forsaken you. I am with you in that boat. And if it feels like I'm sleeping, Jesus says, it's because I know I'm the solution. It's because I know that I am the key, Jesus says. Have more faith that Jesus is the key. Have more faith that Jesus is the answer. Because you're impossible, because your storm, because your circumstance is absolutely nothing in the hands of God. So I bring this message to you today humbly. And I want to remind you that despite what you're going through, Jesus says, it'll be all right. Can you go ahead and stand up on your feet? No heads, no heads bowed, eyes open. Um, have faith, okay. Raise your hand if you're going through something right now. Can, it, can you look at, with your hands raised, look around, okay? Look around. You can put your hands down. If you raise your hand, can I invite you to the altar? Can I invite you forth? If I ever needed to be convinced, like, blessed are those that have believed and have not seen, okay? Blessed are those. God bless you if you believe and have not seen. But I think God allowed me to go through my storm because maybe I lacked some faith. And Jesus let me know that he is still alive he is still real. He still works. My storm could have drowned me. But Jesus said, I am not done with you yet. I don't know what you're going through right now. You're here for different reasons. But Jesus says, I am not done with any of you yet. And your circumstances are nothing for your God. Let's go ahead and pray. I'm going to pray over every single one of you and everyone that's watching online right now. And I encourage you to have faith that God is still alive. He still works. He is a solution to your problems. His Holy Spirit is in you. And that same power that spoke over that sea is within you. So as I pray, I encourage you to pray. 
I encourage you to pray and speak over your life in Jesus' name. My storms bow down to Jesus Christ. Go ahead and close your eyes.